people just don't know that processed foods cripple cell function. And so anything is going to get better. And that's really the fun of it. You are listening to The Dr. Haley Show, the podcast dedicated to helping you optimize your health. Each episode, there will be an interview or a message to help you discover better health. We will be featuring health radicals on the show to bring new ideas to the table, as well as doubling down on key fundamentals to support you living your best life. Your host is no other than the founder of Haley Nutrition, Dr. Michael Haley. I'm Dr. Michael Haley. And today's guest is Dr. Joan Ifland. Dr. Ifland teaches doctors and other healthcare practitioners how to use food addiction recovery to put diet-related diseases into remission. She's the author of the textbook, Processed Food Addiction. Dr. Ifland has been creating breakthroughs in recovery from food addictions for 25 years now. She's the founder of ARC, which stands for Addiction Reset Community. She hosts the Facebook group, Food Addiction Education. Dr. Ifland earned her PhD in Addictive Nutrition at Union Institute and University in 2010, her MBA at Stanford Business School in 1978, and her BA in Economics and Political Science at Oberlin College in 1974. She currently resides in Seattle. This is a good one. Enjoy the show. Joe Nifflin, thank you for being on the Dr. Haley Show podcast. I've seen enough of your content to know what you're about, and we certainly have a lot of similar thoughts and probably similar inspirations. We're both on this natural, real food kick to not only help us recover from conditions, because you and I are probably pretty symptom-free, but to live our best potentials. This is it, Dr. Haley. I'm so honored to be here. And I love your message. We are, we live, I have an undergraduate degree in economics and political science and an MBA from Stanford. So I'm really keenly aware of how profitable it is to make us sick in our heads, in our hearts, in our souls, in our bodies, uh, and then try to sell us cures for it. So uh, when I uh, get to be with somebody who gets this and is offering the life that we're really entitled to have, we're entitled to be free from pain and anxiety and be consistently happy. And I know a lot of people like, oh, that is so Pollyanna. So I'm really happy to meet a kindred soul. You know, it's funny, I was thinking about your education in the 70s, being in business and political science and wondering, well, how did that lead you into nutrition and health? But now I'm thinking about it from a different perspective. And that being what you just said, you can see the economic reasons for how we got here in the first place. Can you explain that a little bit? Totally, totally. And I, uh, you wouldn't think that that background would be great for what I do, but it's perfect because you and I are here and all your listeners are here because we live in unregulated capitalism, which means that businesses, corporations are allowed to go and hire neurologists to rearrange how our brain works, to give us particularly these intense cravings and uh, cravings that overwhelm our rational thought. So right off the bat, before I tell the tobacco food story, I want to introduce a theme for our interview, which is, this is not your fault. This is not your fault. It's really deeply embedded because they attacked us as children with things like Kool-Aid. Sugar is more addictive than cocaine. They're ruthless. They're vicious. They're highly skilled. They do hire neurologists. They own their own brain imaging equipment. And they do, I'm talking about the tobacco food industries. They do put people in those uh, brain imaging machines 
to make the cravings as intense as possible. And an intense craving is pulling the blood supply away from the frontal lobe where you would have rational thought, no, I don't want to eat that. So when that part of the brain has crashed because they pulled the plug on it, it's just like if you're, if you're, computer runs out of battery or your phone runs out of battery, it can't help you. Your frontal lobe can't help you if you're in this intense craving state. And that's exactly what these corporations are doing. They are formulating products, formulating their messaging, their advertising, even availability. You know, they're taking out the cigarette machines and they're putting in snack and soda machines. All of these things provoke cravings. They are they're hiding addictive substances like they hid extra nicotine and pyrocene and cigarettes. They came straight over to processed foods and they hid vast quantities of high fructose corn, corn syrup, uh, salt and uh, fats in, in things that shouldn't have them in it. So um, this really I started- I want to talk about a couple of those things because you know, I, I was wondering, did they pull the plug on our brains in the programming that we saw on TV and we see on the YouTube ads, or was it the chemicals, but you're saying both of them? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And stress. So when I think about children's programming, uh, I grew up in the 50s. So I'm thinking about like the Three Stooges, Roadrunner. Uh, even uh, like Lassie. Lassie was always getting in trouble. Somebody was always getting I, in trouble. You just said something, Roadrunner. I used to love watching Roadrunner. And now that you're saying that, it is reminding me of the serial commercials. So this is, this is Procter & Gamble actually um, engineered this. They pioneered this. And, you know, Procter & Gamble for decades was known as for its marketing. I should reveal that my father worked for Parker and Gamble for 35 years. He was a biochemist and product development on the, the soap side of the, the house, fortunately not the processed food side. But um, they figured out that the best way to use television was to have stressful programming, which would make people yearn for getting it right, you know, fixing it, fixing it. I got to fix it. And then run commercials for products that would fix it. So that's why, that's where soap operas come from. When television started, Procter & Gamble was the biggest employer of actors, scriptwriters, cameramen. They had their own studios. And they thought, hmm, what's the most stressful programming out there? Oh, operas, tragedies. And they built these scripts, these tragic scripts. And they wow. hired the actors and they filmed it like, okay, well, we can put, pro, you know, three minutes of commercials out of every 15 minutes of programming. But, but what are we going to put in the programming? Oh, let's put something really stressful in. And then people will be off balance and like, oh, yes, Mr. Clean will solve my problems. That hasn't changed. And when they went to advertise processed foods to children, they, they took that model. Okay. I mean, the, all of those programs adamant. are incredibly violent. If you watch them from the uh, an adult perspective, they're inc they're scary, and they're that people are getting hurt. You know, Roadrunner got run over all the time, and and so now the children are anxious. <gasps> I'm in pain. I'm distressed. Mom, could we have some Kool Aid? It's You're adding scary. a new perspective to a little. I don't know if you want to call it research. I'm going to call it research that I had done in the, I guess, late 80s, early 90s. And at the time, they said that the average American was watching 20 hours of TV per week. Oh, my gosh. Now, you mentioned commercials every 15 minutes, but it was actually, and you know this, it was actually more often than that, probably every 10 minutes. And each series of commercials had about five commercials in it and in that group of commercials there was usually one drug commercial one food commercial and then other Cleaning things mixed products in. and cars and insurance and medications all these things that people well but in doing easy math 
let's keep it easy and say that instead of watching 20 hours a week, we were pretty good and we only watched 10 hours per week. Now, each hour had five series of commercials, which one of those was a drug commercial. We'll use the drug commercial or food commercial. It doesn't matter. They or a cigarette commercial. I don't, I actually don't remember that. Oh, yeah. I don't remember this cigarette commercials. Winston I know we, there were a lot of tastes good beer. like a cigarette should. There were a lot of beer commercials. You're quite a I bit younger that. than I am. You pre- Maybe they were off the air by the time you were watching TV. Possibly. Beer possibly. commercials, soda commercials, yeah. So let's say one fast food commercial or cereal commercial every uh, series of commercials, but there were five in an hour. So you were being exposed to five every hour. And if you were a good person only watching half the TV that others watched, you would get 50 of those drug commercials or food commercials per week. Exactly. Now, if you took a two-week vacation and only did 50 weeks out of the year, that would be 2,500 little brainwashings. And if you watched a decade, we're up to 25,000. But now we're up to four decades. So that's over 100,000 little brainwashing segments for drugs or for Oh, my gosh, Dr. Haley, food. you're right on a key topic. There's research so, at Stanford showing that so they put two groups of toddlers. One group saw a one-hour program, no commercials. The other group, five commercials. Then they put the toddlers in a room with a whole bunch of products. The toddlers that had seen five. And you're right on the money. You're, you're talking about hundreds, thousands. These toddlers had seen five. And they all went for the product that they had seen. But I didn't think of how strategic they were in using the emotions and trauma. I didn't really re- I thought it was just a numbers thing, but no, it's far greater than it's that. It's an incredible manipulation. And in so, for example, um, can I give you an example? Yes. <laughs> OK, because this commercial hasn't aired in a lot of years. But how would you finish this jingle? Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Oh, what a relief it is. Alka-Seltzer. How do you spell relief? Yes. R-O-L-A-I-D-S. And we know these things because they are imprinted on our brains Well, forever. this is, so when, when somebody watches a screen, um, it activates a set of neurons in the brain. When somebody watches anybody, but this is transmitted over screens, we're using it to make people healthy. There are, there's a special network of brain cells in the brain called mirror neurons. They watch, this is, they only do one thing. They watch what other people are doing and then they reach over and they encode that behavior on the surrounding brain cells. So when you see a doctor smoking, you're encoding, oh, doctor smoke. Okay. We will smoke too. And that is, that is used viciously against uh viewers of anything so even can i don't know if you've noticed this but over the years a regular programming has become much much more uh frightening scary terrifying traumatizing and what people don't know is that your brain is encoding it as if it happened in front of you be afraid, be afraid, run away, run away, hide, be depressed. Oh my gosh, it's relentless. It creates anxiety. And then you combine it with the substances. Uh, now, Americans, and the last set of numbers were maybe from 2020, 2018. Americans were eating 73% of their food in processed foods, which elevates adrenaline, destabilizes blood glucose, shuts down the um, pleasure pathways in the brain. So you're having these chemical alterations that make people depressed, anxious, and cripple cell function. Every cell in the body is crippled from processed foods. And then um, on top of that, now you're getting this incredibly terrifying messaging. It's, It's no reason why depression and anxiety and even you even see the suicide numbers creeping up. That's it's not, it's explainable. Yeah, Joan, I have a uh, confession because you're further along in this than I am. And in the late '90s, you were already into this movement, influencing people, 
writing, creating content and support groups. I was early in this change in my life. I thought I could eat anything I wanted. And as long as I exercised, I would turn it into superhuman. Yeah. And my confession is at that time, when I got out of school, out of chiropractic college, I was still drinking diet Cokes. Uh -huh. Now mm -hmm. I decided it wasn't good for me. I had learned enough about the sweetener that was being used and how that aspartame can affect my brain. So I just thought it'd be a good thing before I started having problems. Smart. And then one day I decided I really wanted to have a diet soda. Now, what I didn't realize is that my symptom had gone away. And I had this soda and my symptom came back. I thought, oh my goodness, is it possible that I had tinnitus yes. for years because I was drinking diet soda? So yes. I didn't have it. A few days later, it went away. And then because I'm kind of a scientist guy, I decided, well, let's see if this is true. And I popped my soda open, drank it. And sure enough, I had that right same back. tinnitus. It's a swelling. So uh, sodas, processed foods are inflammatory. And certainly they can inflame the little tiny bones in, in the ear. You know, I will say we've had a recover online recovery community, the ARC, for six and a half years now. I thought, okay, this is the right level of support to get people off of processed foods. And uh, then within a year or so, I said, it's not just processed foods, it's also stress. Because stress is inflammatory. And stress actually will activate the cravings. It's like, it's like the brain, this lovely brain we have. Oh, if you're stressed out, well, I'm going to encourage you to go get something to numb. You know, it's just, it's this terrible dance. The cravings will also create stress because if you're too euphoric and you're out of it, your brain will try to bring you back down to earth. So there's this tight, really vicious dance between the stress pathways and the, the craving pathways. So, um, and within a couple of years, I realized that kindness is just as important as the food plan. It's, it's just as important to be around very, very kind, but expert. You know, it's not kind to tell somebody, oh, sure, you can eat that. That's not kind. What's kind is I'm going to offer you some skills so that you can avoid the cravings for, for that. So I will tell you, and then recently in the last couple of years, We've started introducing modalities, breath work, visualization, tapping, uh, sound healing. All these things work great. They work great. But a hundred years ago, John D. Rockefeller went around to the legislature and said, you know, the only thing that works is pharmaceuticals. So you shouldn't license anybody. Doctors, nurses, dietitians, yes. But everything else is quackery. You, ha he had to do that because all this other stuff works great. If people had continued to use it and you're a chiropractor, you know what I'm talking about. There wouldn't have been demand for this massive pharmaceutical industry that we have today. But here's, I'm trying to get to the bottom line. I've seen, if you, if you still have it, like it hasn't been surgically removed or you were born without it or you lost it in an accident. If you still have it, it'll start to work again. Mm. We've seen lots of incurable chronic conditions. Oh, you have to take medications for this. Oh, you're going to have this for the rest of your life. Get used to it. We've seen all that stuff go into remission. That is interesting because as you were saying it, I'm wondering what the it is. It doesn't matter. It's whatever it is if you still have it. Are you enjoying the show thus far? One of the many health secrets that we have covered on the show is all around aloe vera, specifically drinking raw aloe vera. Our aloe vera has helped our customers effectively heal their gut, increase their intestine health, lower inflammation in the body, eliminate and or decrease acid reflux, have glowing skin and hair, and so much more. Now, as a frequent member of our audience, you will be exposed to exclusive specials and coupon codes for the awesome products manufactured by Haley Nutrition. That's right, for simply being awesome and tuning in, you can get a mini discount to help you optimize and better your health. To see how we can help and support you on your health journey, 
tune into the episodes and listen for coupon codes that you can use at www.haleynutrition.com before you make your orders of raw aloe vera. Once again, it's www.haleynutrition.com. Now, back to the show. Processed foods and stress and then lack, lack. There's a third piece here. There's lack of access, lack of knowledge and use in a group. So that's normal and your brain will let you use it of uh, healing, these healing modalities that it all cripples cell function. So whether it's cells in your brain or your skin or your heart or your gut or your liver or your lungs or your reproductive system or your joints, it's all going to get better. So that's amazing. And it's true. I like the group concept because there's so many benefits that come with having like-minded people and leaders and people that have done it and can lead we role you models. The, role yeah. models are, are an essential part of changing behavior because you remember how mirror neurons work. They're imprinting, they're encoding what they see people, well, if you're only around people, average American eating 73% of your food and processed foods, then then that's the mirror neurons are going to imprint that. And that's what you'll be doing. 93% of Americans have a metabolic related diagnosis and they're on medications. So if you're only around that kind of person, you're like, you're, you're imprinting, oh, we should be on a medication. Oh, we should be sick. That's how mirror neurons work. I like how you mentioned modalities too, and talked about, you know, breath work. I didn't realize that taking a breath, nice, big, long breath can take you out of that reptilian brain and activate the higher brain, Smart. which puts you back in power. So simple. It's very easy to learn. It's free. These videos are on YouTube. But you're right about doing it in a group. If your brain doesn't see anybody else doing it, then it's not going to imprint that you should be doing it. Power of mirror neurons. Mirror neurons um, are more powerful than any other part of the brain, with one exception. If you're in fear of famine, then your best... So why do, why do we have mirror neurons? It's because we're, we're fairly small mammals on the whole range. And we would not, as an individual, we wouldn't be able to fight off predators. Whether you're an evolutionist or a creationist, it's very interesting. But this business of you must be in a tribe is prominent in both of those fields of thought. If, um, if the saber-toothed tiger jumped out and you were in a group, you would live. If it jumped out and you were alone, you would die. So people are very, very, very conscious of where's my group? How close are they? How, where are they? What are they doing? I should be doing that too. It's a survival mechanism. And in, uh, in creationist um, frameworks, what is the first thing that you know about somebody? You know which tribe they come from. Because then you'll know their customs and you'll know what they eat and you'll know how they dress and you'll know what they believe. So this is, it's very interesting, but these, this, you know, I belong to a tribe and I do what the tribe is doing. And now we have the science. We know, we know why people will just almost, uh, you know, no matter what, that they will fit in with a, a group and be accepted by that group and therefore be protected by that group. We know what the mechanism is and we see it. The advertisers don't want you to know this. The advertisers want you to think that what you're seeing on the screen, that doctor smoking, that doctor uh, advocating a medicine, um, that cool guy driving that car, uh, the advertisers want you to think that th that's your tribe. Oh, he's driving that car? Oh, well, I should be driving that car too. Wow. Let's get a couple definitions out of the way here. This is where, where it might get a little awkward. What is a processed food? Okay. So it is the processing and processed food addiction, processed food cravings is the right term 
to use is not ultra processed foods, which don't include sugar and flour and dairy that you use at home. And it's not food addiction because that includes healthy substances, healthy things. So how do you know that a plant, it's typically a plant, has been converted from a food into a drug? Plants have natural endorphins in them. It's, you know, Mother Nature's beautiful. Uh, she didn't say, oh, you just, you have to chew this up and swallow it so you don't die. No, you know, you, you get these endorphin releases. And, um, and it's lovely. And it encourages people to eat. And it makes this kind of chore uh, into something very pleasant. So that's great. All of that is perfect. And we all want that. And that's healthy. And it's survival. And it's thriving. And great. We, we like enjoying. We like that we get a little dopamine or serotonin or opioid or cannabinoid release. When you concentrate those endorphins by processing them, then the, the joy and pleasure all go away. You get a high. You get enough um, casomorphine, which is the morphine in dairy, or you get enough gluteomorphine, which is the, the morphine in gluten, or you get enough sweetener. Uh, you know, they take the fiber out so that it's absorbed more quickly. So that when you're eating something like, um, oh, you know, like sugar, like diet, sugar is just crystallized alcohol. I mean, come on. You have, you have enough endorphin that, that you get a high, that you stimulate those craving pathways enough that your brain floods with craving neurotransmitters. And then you get a crash because they're exhausted. And then you, you have intense cravings. The, the, the crash is quite painful. Your world can go really dark because those pleasure pathways, the addiction pathways are the pleasure pathways. They are the part of the brain that we have to feel pleasure. So if they're all exhausted and you feel terrible, you're just like down in the dumps and you're hurting and you're inflamed and and you want to turn right around and, and get out of it, so you use, and that's the addiction cycle. That's how. That's so. It is the process. It's the concentrating. You could almost call them um, concentrated foods. Okay, what are some foods that you would consume that have been maybe processed in a sense? For instance, I had oatmeal today, uh -huh. and those oats were rolled. Rolled. So technically that's processed. It is. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Um, and like instant oats are even more rolled. And so they're more processed. They rolled and chopped. <laughs> they break down and get into your system very quickly. Some people would get a high and a crash from that. Some like more sensitive people. And some people would be great. Especially if you ate the oats with a protein and some fat. The, the protein and fat will slow down the absorption and you can really enjoy that. Hmm. If you can't, you could try making what are called oat groats. So hmm. that is the kernel before it's been flattened, you know, before it's been put between those rollers. This is why it's called and rolled oats. Definitely my preference. It, because when you, you know, if you boil them, and you eat them, they almost pop in your mouth, the oat groats. Yeah, that's a lot of work to chew oat groats. Yes, yes, yeah. unless they're cooked. And then it's kind of nice. It's pleasant. Yeah, yeah, I like oat groats. But okay. I have to look for the gluten-free ones. Yeah. So salt activates the um, opioid pathways. The, the salt active has can, you know, excessive salt. We all need to eat salt. It's part of our electrolyte uh, health. But if you eat excessive salt, like the amount of salt that they put in Lunchables to addict children to salt, then you actually get a, a release of the same pathways, the opioid pathways that opium activates. Dairy has four kinds of natural casomorphines. And dairy is designed to put a baby, a hundred pound baby calf to sleep. 
that's how strong the narcotics in natural dairy, right out of the cow, organic, you name it, raw, blah, blah, blah. It's got enough casomorphine in it to put a 100 pound animal to sleep. So it's numbing. It's numbing for, for humans. It's not, it's not for humans. Uh, it'll keep us alive, but it will also keep us numb. It's Dr. Haley interrupting this podcast to give you a site-wide coupon code for use at HaleyNutrition.com. You can even use it on our frozen aloe vera, and we hardly ever do that, especially when we're running out. Our freezer is almost empty, but we're working hard to convince our farmer to get out in the field for another harvest. You can say this coupon is a little bit of a faith move. So head over to HaleyNutrition.com and use the coupon code FAITH, F-A-I-T-H, for a 7% discount off your entire purchase. The code will work throughout the month of June of 2024. Now back to the Dr. Haley Show podcast. What kind of food does Dr. Joe Nifflin eat? So I will tell you this morning, I had, for breakfast I had a, a peach. Peaches are in season. And I had a meat. I have access to nitrate free. I'm going to tell you what it was. It was salami. But I have access to nitrate free salami. And that's a balanced protein fat. Now, somebody told me recently that they're that the manufacturers are on to this. And so they're packing so much more fat into the salamis that uh, now they're addictive. Because mm. fat will activate the same pathway, excessive fat. We need to eat fat. It, our brains are encased in fats. Our nervous system are encased. Every cell in the body, the membrane is made from little microscopic droplets of fat. You've got to eat fat. I know some people are out there screaming. The plant-based people are screaming when I, they, I say that. Um, but excessive fat will activate the same pathway as marijuana. Mm. So you have this combination uh, addiction. You see like the fast food companies and caffeine also activates dopamine. So you've got, if it, whether it's a hamburger or a taco or a pizza, they've hit all seven of the biggest um, addictive processed foods. And that's why it's very interesting, but all, all of those chains are very successful. The next most successful chain is a chain that doesn't use cheese. It's the, it's Asian food. And um, they don't typically use corn or wheat. They use rice as their flour. And so there, it's not as addictive and it's not as successful. Not as successful. Yeah. Keyword successful. I thought it was interesting when you mentioned meat because that was my other confession and that was I had learned that even as a physician I graduated school and I here I am out of school to influence people on how they should live and eat and I'm still eating processed lunch meats and what I realized with them when I stopped eating them my violent dreams stopped the chemicals in whatever it was in the meats, preservatives, whatever they were, something doing something to my brain mm -hmm. to where when I sleep at night, it was very, very violent. People have no idea that dreams, feelings, emotions are being um, just viciously induced by processed foods. And, you know, it's very likely that... Uh, now I look at, of course, I look carefully at the labels, but that there are, there are also sweeteners. There's MSG and MSG is not on the label anymore. It's now called natural flavorings. Uh, there are a lot of chemicals and these are addiction scientists. These are addiction, these are drug dealers. And so what are they working on all the time is to get the maximum amount, amount of drugs into what you're consuming so that you stay craving for them. Yeah, I've just, I haven't looked at it yet, but somebody turned me on to, uh, there's a lot of new, um, or some new research, I haven't looked at it yet, on the addictive properties of MSG. 
we know artificial sweeteners are, are highly addictive and they dysregulate a glucose. So, yeah. Yeah, I love what Marian Nestle, she was the chairman of the nutrition department at, at New York University for years. She said, if it has a label, it's a warning label. You know, if it's got a list of ingredients, it's, it's just, if it's in a package, don't <laughs> buy it. Yeah. It's not nutrition facts. It's a warning label. Yeah. I carrots, never heard that. carrots don't have nutrition facts on them. Celery does not. Uh, it's just like, if it's, if it doesn't have a label, that's, you know, try it, <laughs> try it. Because a lot of clean foods at this point don't work for some people. Like the nightshade group just doesn't work for me. I, I don't like the way I feel after I've had uh, a, a nightshade. So it's fun. We teach actually a method where people can customize their own plan. Uh, but it does include sleep quality. People have no idea that what they're eating is affecting their sleep quality. And I think that is key because you can't have a one size fits all, mm -mm. one diet for everybody. Mm -mm. I happen to do very well on fats and protein and carbohydrates, not so good. I, I'll have the ups and downs and I mm -hmm. like staying nice and even. Uh, I've seen people... it go both ways. I've seen people get off a, a, a plant-based diet and onto a, a meat fat diet and suddenly like overnight have control of their food. And I've seen it go the other way. People who've been on a carnivore or keto type diet go on to plant-based and suddenly just like overnight have control of their food. So it depends because there's so many different substances in this range of addictive foods. If you're addicted to um, fat, which you can be, if you get on a keto diet or if you get on any kind of a diet that a food plan that takes the refined carbohydrates out, but you don't treat the addiction. In other words, you don't get thought control, awareness of cueing, emotional processing. If you don't get all of those skills and you just stop using sugar and flour, you, you could easily transfer the addiction to fat. And I have heard people you know, over the weeks, they're so excited. They're not obsessively thinking about sugar and flour anymore. They think they've got it fixed. And then gradually they're noticing that they used to have one pepperoni stick and now they're having two, or they used to have one bag of pork rinds and now they're having two. And now they're, they're starting to crave the, the fats. Well, you didn't fix the addiction, you transferred it. And then the sad thing about that is the sugar cravings don't actually go away. They incubate. Six months later, you think, oh, I'll just have a bite of this wedding cake. And they're back. And that little match, it's like dropping a match on a can of gasoline. Boom. Now your sugar cravings are back. But now, in addition to the sugar cravings, you have the fat cravings. And that's lethal. Well, how did you get so smart in these areas? Did you have certain books that influenced you? And when I, you wrote I your did, book. I did a PhD out of school for new fields. I did a PhD in addictive nutrition uh, union Institute. They're not offering it. They're not offering the new it's, it was a school for new fields and they're now they're only doing traditional subjects. So you can't do it there anymore. Um, so I learned a lot in those two years. I had a fabulous committee. And then I wrote papers for other people for a couple of years. And then CRC Press came along and they asked me to write the textbook for the field. Ta -da! There it is. Well, uh, three years opened up in my life. My dad died and he left me enough money to live on. And my stepmom, my 90 year old stepmom needed advocating. So I moved back to Cincinnati. I found this darling little apartment and I sat there for three years for full time reading research, reading research. My dad was a researcher. He was a meticulous researcher. Uh, his company did not lose a negligence suit for 35 years because you have to, he was so meticulous. Mm. He was so conscientious. I'm that kind of a researcher. 
I have over 8,000 studies in my database that describe various aspects of what happened. But that MBA 45 years ago, that is a hugely valuable piece of this. I grew up in a corporate household. I worked in a corporation for five years after I got out of business school, before I became too sick to go back to work. I worked for state government. I worked for the Wisconsin legislature as a fiscal analyst, my first job out of school. I, my, in that undergraduate degree in political science, you, you will not see me making one little tiny effort to change the government. That's not where I'm going. Where I'm going is to workplaces. I now I have a model. We have a patent pending on this model. It's messaging menu modalities. And I am looking for workplaces where I can create an environment that instead of having the food industry manipulate your employees, the truth is being um, presented to your employees. And the people don't know that processed foods are, it's now it's documented, uh, uh, 32 diseases, recent research, ultra processed foods. And, um, but I have, uh, uh, an author named uh, Nancy Appleton who wrote Lick the Sugar Habit decades ago. She maintains a website where uh, she's got a study for a disease and a study for a disease at relating sugar to disease. I think she's got 144 of them. People just don't know that processed foods cripple cell function. And so anything is going to get better. And that's really the fun of it. That's why this is so fun. It's because yes. all those things, things that you didn't know were fixable. Oh, that's just the way I am. I'm a little depressed. No. Oh, no. We're all, we all just have a little bit of this irritation. We're, we're an irritable family. No. No, it's not genetic. You're eating, you're consuming substances that increase your adrenaline and wear out your pleasure pathways. It's really, that's the fun part of it is when people are like, oh, that's not me. Oh, that's not my fault. Oh, that's not genetic. That's in the food. Well, how do I get off of it? Because then even if you know, the cravings can still just drag you back into the pit. It's fun. Do you think this is fun, Dr. Haley? Oh, I love it. I love it. I also love when I hear you talk about things getting better because we have become so programmed to think that health comes in a bottle, in a pill bottle. We don't even need a diagnosis for this to work. We don't even have to know that there is something wrong or becoming wrong because when we consume not only healthy food, but healthy mental input, good rest, healthy exercise. When we consume these things in our life, we have this knowledge in us that somehow knew what to do with everything we mm -hmm. ate to turn it into more of who we are. We started out as these little infants and somehow it took this food input and arranged it into more human tissue, full size humans now. How did it do that? How did it know how to do that? I don't know how to do that. Somehow the life in me knows how to do that. Yeah. And as we put in good materials, good workmanship materials that the body can use, it knows what to do with it. It does. It knows how to heal the worst diseases. Cancer can be cured. There is a cure for cancer. It's life fixing things faster than they're getting damaged. That's the cure. It's a very smart way to put that. The processed food that I am in, the business that I'm in, is actually aloe vera. It is minimally processed. We hand fillet the aloe vera leaves, run them through a grinder, put them into containers that go into the freezer, and then we ship it frozen to the customer. And then That's how does the customer use it? They melt it, pour it into a glass and drink it. Ah, okay. Drink. So it's as if they 
took their own fruit or vegetable and put it in the blender and then consumed it that way instead of chewing it and, and eating it. But it has gone through a period of being frozen to get. I would anything. see I, that kind of a product I would put over in the category of herbs and supplements. And that's huge. I mean, for before the pharmaceutical industry came along, um, every village had a person who was schooled, knowledgeable about herbs and supplements. That is definitely a big piece of health. I don't want anybody to think that I am um, saying don't use pharmaceuticals, um, but but try out these other things and make sure that you really need them. And then find a practitioner like Dr. Haley who knows uh, about the role of food. You can't believe how many doctors will tell you with conviction because it's the way they've been trained that food doesn't have anything to do with it. It's just yeah. still to me shocking today. The purpose Yay. of medicine is to buy time so that we can make the changes we need to make or the life in us can do what it needs to do to heal the damage. We should not be reliant on medications. They have That's their really benefits, smart. but it's to buy time. And while you're using them, your goal should always be to get off them. Now, there's some cases that won't happen. There's some things that, you know, forever your body's not making insulin or whatever the case is. And you might need that particular medication, but you can at least stop getting on others. And you can... You know, even like for type 1 diabetes, if you're on a clean food plan, it, the clean food plan will um, stabilize your glucose. You still need the external insulin to get it to be absorbed by the cells, but you, you're you not having the, the highs and the crashes. That It's the highs that create the damage. So, so even, even if you're type 1, now type 2, you can put into remission. Right. But type one, you right, can, right, you right. can uh, avoid the damage uh, that occurs when your glucose, your blood glucose is too high. It's too thick. It's breaking capillaries. You can avoid that. Mm, that's it's good not idea. a, it's not a sentence. It's not a, a given. Where do you think the best first stop for someone is? Would it be in the arc? Would it be get your book? I would say go to food addiction reset and take the self quiz. There are the 11 diagnostic criteria for alcoholism as adapted to processed foods and you will see what has been done to you. So we didn't get to talk about the tobacco story but in the mid 1980s, R.G. Reynolds, Philip Morris bought Kraft, Nabisco, General Foods in three years. And it was because, in my opinion, it was because of the invention of high fructose corn syrup. They had a cheap sweetener. And that completed the addiction business model. The addiction business model is the five A's. It's you have uh, addictive substances in the product hidden, like nicotine and cigarettes, high fructose corn syrup and processed foods. You, uh, it has to be cheap. So it has to be affordable, it has to be addictive, affordable, available. You know, they were taking out the cigarette vending machines and putting in the, the snack and soda machines, convenience stores, big box grocery stores, fast food. It has to be available. It has to be, um, you have to hit the youngest possible user. So Joe Camel cartoon campaign, out going after 10 year old boys, Kool-Aid going after toddlers. They took the Marlboro Country Store, which is an addiction building business process. And, and if this is in their internal documents, which are on file, they wow. adapted that to the Wacky Warehouse for Kool-Aid. Vicious. And then um, you have to have deceptive advertising. You have to make cigarettes sexy, when in fact they're disgusting. And you have Absolutely. to make processed foods convenient when in fact they just destroy your energy and your attitude. They take your, your well being, and you can't, I mean, you, you're just stuck there in front of the, the computer or the TV because you're, you're too tired to do anything else. 
people don't know processed foods create incredible fatigue and brain fog and depression and painful joints, they're paralyzing. Yeah. So that's, yeah. I just want to make sure, and that's why it's not your fault. It wasn't anybody's fault that two thirds of Americans smoked. They were subjected to this addiction business model. It's not your fault that 44% of Americans are now obese or super obese. It's not your fault that another 44% of Americans are overweight. It's not your fault if you're one of the 93% of Americans over the age of 20 who have high triglycerides, high blood glucose, high blood pressure, or excessive fat tissue on your body. That's not your fault. Nobody's telling you. Now, you know, you might know that processed foods are not healthy, but nobody has given you all of the support. It takes a lot of support. All four of the craving pathways are now super sensitive to triggering cravings. It started uh, really at conception. You're constantly pounded by triggering and food stimulation. So you need, all you need is a higher level of support. And so you need a doctor like fault. Dr. Haley. Thank you. It's not your fault, but if you now, with the knowledge you have, now that you know, if you continue in the ways it might be your fault, now well, that you, you know. If you continue in this way, it might take a while for you to really get your head wrapped around. Um, you need a program like the ARC. The ARC is very specifically, meticulously detailed, designed to be very, very easy to use. So we broadcast 15 hours a day on Zoom with trained hosts. We have our own training programs. If you're a professional and you want to learn how to help your patients, Dr. Haley, you could take our training. <laughs> I could. Um, yeah. So now there are resources that were not on the planet before. We do have a patent pending for our system. If you're an employer, if you are a, a faith-based organization, please get in touch with us. Uh, go to processedfoodaddiction.com and you'll see a place to leave your email. We are looking for workplaces. We're working, looking for faith organizations that want to implement this for their populations. This is very easy to do in a group, in a community, a, a place where you already know the, the people there and you're already, you're already used to belonging in that group. I like that. You can take this from one person to a big group. And if you consider the audience, could you, could you imagine if just a percentage of the people in the audience took it to all of their individual yes, groups. Wow. Yes. What a change could be made in the world from this. Yes. I will do my best to make it as easy for the listener to click through, find the quiz, your website. I'm going to put a link to your YouTube channel too, because oh, it's pretty thank darn you. good. Yeah. We've got That's some really new good. videos out there. And uh, so that you can find out about the art too. So, uh, Joan, thank you so much. Uh, thanks I for having absolutely me. Absolutely love and appreciate you. Thank You're you. You're a beautiful Ditto. person and doing a great work. I hope you enjoyed that episode today on the Dr. Haley Show. Make sure to hit subscribe on whichever platform you are listening to this. If this episode made you think of someone, go ahead, take a screenshot, and share this exact episode with them. You can catch the show notes for this episode on www.drhaley.com. If you want to geek out with Dr. Michael Haley on other radical health topics, be sure to check out his YouTube channel where he posts exclusive video content. All the details are at www.drhaley.com and we can't wait to hang out with you on the next episode.